It's a great video, except for one thing. It's wrong. Now, don't mistake what I'm saying. I can't blame them. We've all been suckered in by the Sega propaganda machine. Time to make a rebuttal. Okay, so first, a reiterated point about your Sonic video. I think if we're going to measure Mario's height, Super Mario Bros. is not the best source to cite, because there are several graphical inconsistencies. And as I've stated before, I can see that if that is 5'10", then that is 9. But is this full-sized Peach or unsuper Peach? Now, we could make the point about Mario's height not being accurate when analyzing the distance of the pipe, but I think it's more impressive to determine Mario's speed in one of the new Super Mario Bros. games. But we're not going to focus on Mario, that's a whole different debate. We're only focusing on Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog! First, take a look at what you did. You decided to take Sonic's true height by comparing him to Elise from Sonic 06. You determined that Sonic is 1.1 meters. Fair enough, good job on the math. This version of Sonic is undoubtedly 1.1 meters. But then you went on to use this version's height and applied it to the very first Sonic game. First off, you should never do that, unless you absolutely have to. Secondly, that's a huge mistake. As we see in Sonic Generations, modern Sonic, the Sonic from Sonic 06, is significantly taller than classic Sonic, the Sonic from the original trilogy. Plus, you are calculating the flat distance of Green Hill Zone. You aren't taking into account all of the jumps, loops, and hills that Sonic has to run up and down. Plus, we should know, this is Sonic's first adventure. He knows he's fast, but he's inexperienced. He doesn't know his top speed, he probably can't even reach close to it. So let's move on to a more modern Sonic game. Our second point ironically comes from possibly the worst Sonic game ever created. In Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, Sonic is occasionally involved in Mach speed sections. Mach 1 means that you are moving at the speed of sound. So naturally, Mach speed sections must infer to the moments in the track that Sonic is going to speed up fast enough to break the speed of sound. In these sections, Eggman is usually the target focus. And knowing the good old doctor, he's probably pumped his machines up to make sure they can outrun Sonic. So the idea of Eggman being faster would make sense. Even Eggman himself he's probably wearing supersonic speed-up shoes. While many have complained about these sections of Sonic stages in the game, these sections provide a majorly gigantic point about Sonic's trademark maneuvers. Moving at the speed of sound would make the game incredibly unfun. These mock speed sections are by far the shortest in the game, usually averaging little over a minute, and if you touch anything, even stuff like rocks, you are mortally wounded. Now, if Sonic isn't even moving at his quickest, if at this speed you're taking two hits and you're dead, imagine what would happen if Sonic did these speeds in other Sonic games. Imagine you were playing Zone 2 in Sonic the same way you did the mock speed sections. You'd never live through Act 1 because all of the walls would simply kill you. You're going too fast to have control over your own motions, and the aspect of realism thrown in just makes it unplayable. Even if we didn't count the idea that touching the walls means insta-death, if playing a Sonic game would be as short as you say it would at these speeds, the speed run for the entirety of the first Sonic game would be less than a minute long. Why would anyone buy it? It'd be criticized worse than Sonic 06, and that is definitely saying something. He just keeps saying it's no use. I mean, he's true, he's right. <laughs> he, he does not lie. And the coin keeps coming back into me. The ring keeps coming back into me. I can't. <laughs> I'm an endless. I can't die. <laughs> I can't die. You know how moviegoers and video game fans like to ask the question, Why can't so and so just find the solution now? Why can't Mario jump over this cardboard block? Why doesn't Mega Man just shoot Wile in the head? Why doesn't Batman just break Joker's neck? The bottom line to these questions is, we want to continue funding this series, and being too realistic would ruin sales. And that isn't even a cold business answer, it's true. If Sonic was made so that Sonic could always run at the speed of sound, the first game would end up like this. <laughs> I am the evil Dr. Robotnik, and I have come to- That's it. Sonic kills Eggman, and there's nothing really left for him to do. And Sega loses its biggest money-making series of all time. But Sonic 06 isn't the only game I wish to touch upon. Let's look at Sonic Unleashed, particularly the area you mentioned in your video. You start off this level with your speed bar maxed out. Sonic's supposed maximum speed. And based on your calculations, meaning that at most, he's running 80 meters per second. But now look closely. You can see that when Sonic boosts up, he also moves to the left and right while not losing any speed. In fact, he moves to the left and right pretty fast. 
This would mean that he can keep up with a speed of 80 meters per second while moving an extra distance left or right. After all, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Diagonal distance is always longer than vertical or horizontal. The ability to keep your speed the same while moving left or right would not only make Sonic's top speed faster, it would make his acceleration far faster. You see no buildup to his dodge left or right, he just goes. In this video, he moves about 11 Sonics to the left without speed loss, considering he is one third of his length wide. That makes him 0.36 meters wide, times 11, this means the distance Sonic is going is 3.96 extra meters while accelerating. If his speed is 80 meters per second, as you say, we need to do this number times the distance he is running, because this isn't just extra distance. To keep a certain speed limit while doing distance is, according to simple math, multiplied by the amount of speed, not plus. So 80 meters times 3.96 would make his speed 316.8 meters per second while moving left or right at the rate he is going. And looking at this makes sense. Sonic is running forward fast. Yes, you can see him doing so and the buildings are going by. But when he moves to the left or right, he is much more that blue blur we always hear Sonic being referred to as. He just darts left and right while still maintaining that constant speed forward. The only truth in this video is that the game developers are lying when they tell you that Sonic is at his maximum speed because he clearly moves faster when going left or right. Still not faster than sound, but this calculation was made entirely on your previous calculation, which are based on the measurements of a building which you cannot be sure of what its real measurements are. A much better way to determine how fast he is would be the time reference. If you know he moved a distance of 3.96 meters to the left, and he did this in approximately a seventh of a second, this would mean he moves 3.96 meters in 142,857 milliseconds. The distance a car travels driving 108 kilometers an hour in that time is 3 centimeters, or 0.3 meters. Now we see what the speed of Sonic is in meters per second, math, 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 this would make 27.72 meters per second. Not that much, you would think. But that is not his actual speed, since he is moving forward the entire time he's moving sideways too. This would mean that 27.72 meters per second is his acceleration speed. You could make further calculations considering what the actual top speed of Sonic would be. Note, he's not doing it here, or in any game we can see, yet. The distance Sonic could entirely move to the left, and calculating this out further would make... 2340.6 meters per second in acceleration because it is almost 23 times his body width. But this is just an educated estimate, I rounded a bit. This could or could not be Sonic's true top speed. Assuming Sonic is moving at 80 meters per second here, you could come up with a lot of different numbers. But then, like MatPat making his cross-dressing to anti-LGBT episode, I suddenly came to what probably is the biggest answer to this whole debate. No matter how many numbers we throw around, the way Sonic speed is portrayed in the game doesn't matter. Because there is one point that truly stands out. Sonic isn't moving faster than the speed of sound. Simply because he doesn't want to. Now, this isn't a cop-out for an answer. Hear me out, Naga News and Game Theorists. Answer me this. What is the one thing Sonic will always care about? Other than chili dogs. Home sweet home! Two doggies with the worst, pal. You got it, bud! Sonic! The protection of his environment. Sonic has a very clear environmentalist theme in his early games. The struggle between Eggman, the developer who wants to build gigantic cities and empires based around him and his robots, and Sonic, the hedgehog, who will do anything to protect his woodland creatures and precious Mobius from turning into an urban skid row. Do you know what the effects of a sonic boom can create? In layman's terms, Sonic would basically be causing a small, invisible explosion while he's running, with lots of wind brushing past the areas he goes to. At the speed he'd be going, the wind alone would be pulling up trees and rocks and causing all sorts of damage. If Sonic did sprint at the speed of sound, he'd be destroying the land he vowed to protect. Yeah, Sonic can be a jerk at times, but his dedication to preserving his home will always be his first quality. Even in urban areas, Sonic tries to keep his speed down because the effects of a sonic boom in a city environment can cause tons of damage. 
and injure those around him. Windows would break, buildings would weaken, pedestrians would have to constantly hear those stupid sonic booms on a daily basis, and if they're close enough to the sonic boom, they could go deaf. This so-called top speed bar in Sonic Unleashed isn't his real top speed. It's as fast as he's willing to go while in a city. And even then, that's still wrong. Remember that we figured out when he is dodging to the left or right for his own safety, he is going 316 meters per second. That's just below the sound barrier with a bit of a safety net in case he accidentally goes a little faster. He's trying his hardest not to break the sound barrier while inside this city, because it would hurt people and cause all kinds of damage. The only time Sonic would feel the need to are in Eggman's areas, the locations where Sonic wouldn't need to care because he would be destroying the headquarters of the man planning to destroy Mobius. But he still doesn't run at these speeds because of the whole crashing into walls and dying part. Eggman's areas have tons of traps in them. Sonic is like Superman in this sense. He always holds back his strongest powers unless absolutely necessary in order to protect the people he loves. And that's what Sonic stands for. But hey, it's just a... rebuttal. A GAME THEORY REBUTTAL. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? I took his catchphrase and I forget it, I'm sorry about that. If you like this video and or want to see more rebuttals of game theory, then like this video, subscribe to Noggin, and share this video with your friends who also like game theory. Maybe they'd like to throw their own comments into the ring as well. Stay awesome, don't stop using your heads, and in Matt Pet's own words... Don't always believe everything you hear. Do the research yourself and you might be surprised by what you find. <laughs> Good day, my fellow Nogganeers who didn't click away from this video when they started to hear the ending theme song. Even after this whole arguing point, I still feel we could be missing something. Something neither MatPat nor I even thought of. So in order to stand for Sonic's honor, I'm going to go on a journey. A journey through every single one of Sonic's games. Searching, analyzing, and investigating until I could find a point where we can effectively say Sonic can move at the speed of sound in at least one of his video games. But I think I'll need some help. So my Nogganeers, I'm going to need all of you to use your heads. Play through some of Sonic's games, and see if you can possibly find a point where he is running beyond the speed of sound. Doing the measurements isn't all that complicated, so maybe you can do your own theory on the matter. Until then, I'm off on my journey to find a bit of truth to end this mystery. Wish me luck, and stay awesome! It's a great video, except for one thing, it's wrong. Now don't mistake what I'm saying, I can't blame them. We've all been suckered in by the Sega propaganda machine. Time to make a rebuttal. Okay, so first, a reiterated point about your Sonic video. I think if we're going to measure Mario's height, Super Mario Bros. is not the best source to cite, because there are several graphical inconsistencies. And as I've stated before, I can see that if that is 5'10", then that is 9. But is this full-sized Peach or unsuper Peach? Now we could make the point about Mario's height not being accurate when analyzing the distance of the pipe, but I think it's more impressive to determine Mario's speed in one of the new Super Mario Bros. games. But we're not going to focus on Mario, that's a whole different debate. We're only focusing on Sonic. Sonic. 2006, Sonic is occasionally involved in Mach speed sections. Mach 1 means that you are moving at the speed of sound. So naturally, Mach speed sections must infer to the moments in the track that Sonic is going to speed up fast enough to break the speed of sound. In these sections, Eggman is usually the target focus. And knowing the good old doctor, he's probably pumped his machines up to make sure they can outrun Sonic. So the idea of Eggman being faster would make sense. Even Eggman himself, he's probably wearing supersonic speed up shoes. While Sonic 06 is significantly taller than classic Sonic, the Sonic from the original trilogy. Plus, you are calculating the flat distance of Green Hill Zone. You aren't taking into account count all of the jumps, loops, and hills that Sonic has to run up and down. Plus, we should know, this is Sonic's first adventure. He knows he's fast, but he's inexperienced. He doesn't know his top speed, he probably can't even reach close to it. So let's move on to a more modern Sonic game. Our second point ironically comes from possibly the worst Sonic game ever created. In Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog. 
first, take a look at what you did. You decided to take Sonic's true height by comparing him to Elise from Sonic 06. You determined that Sonic is 1.1 meters. Fair enough, good job on the math. This version of Sonic is undoubtedly 1.1 meters. But then you went on to use this version's height and applied it to the very first Sonic game. First off, you should never do that, unless you absolutely have to. Secondly, that's a huge mistake. As we see in Sonic Generations, modern Sonic, the Sonic from